Too often, childhood trauma teaches us to be self-critical and non-forgiving toward ourselves. You may know what I'm talking about here. You make a mistake or you don't know something that you think you should know and you beat yourself up for it. For example, I went with my partner to the car wash recently and he asked me to soap up my truck. So I held the car wash thingy and started spraying in the direction of my truck. Then he said, honey, you have to pull the trigger. Yeah, in that moment, I was reminded once again about just how much real life I've missed because of childhood trauma and the isolation that comes with unhealthy or abusive relationships. The truth is, there are a lot of things that I didn't learn in childhood because I was so busy trying to survive and coping with the stresses of living in an unsafe home. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you get that. There are just things that we don't know and that we aren't aware of that we're missing because we didn't get a chance to experience normal things growing up that kids living in a safe, loving family were able to experience and learn. When I say that to you, what do you think about? If your anger is self-directed, you might get mad at yourself for things like simple conversations. I remember I used to get really critical of myself after being in a social situation because I'd pick apart every conversation and absolutely kick myself for stupid things I'd say when truthfully the other person really never thought twice about what we talked about after the conversation was over. But this is an example of internalized anger that manifests as self-criticism. And it can show up because we're afraid of making mistakes or being rejected by other people. So we think we need to be perfect. This comes from having a scary or critical parent who didn't communicate to you that mistakes are okay. So out of fear of consequences like the ones that we suffered growing up, we disconnect from our own feelings and we jump heavily into people pleasing. And we even might find ourselves feeling stuck in situations that we don't like or that are harmful to us because we're too afraid to be angry at anyone but ourselves. In these situations, we'll also think about what's bothering us a lot. But instead of planning for communicating our needs directly or trying to problem solve with the other people who are involved, we continue to blame ourselves and try to change ourselves enough to make a situation right where we really should be talking about what's happening. So right now I'd like to take a step back for a second and have us think about this situation. Imagine the child part of you. Now think of the things that your parents said and did to you that caused you to be so self-critical. Can you see that every time you get angry at yourself or critical at yourself in the ways that we're talking about here, that you're repeating the pattern of your abusive parent toward you? Now let's shift for a second. Think of a small child that you know or one that you've seen. Would you ever dream of talking to that child the way you talk to yourself? Of course not, right? Well, let me challenge you to think about this. Every time you criticize yourself, you're adding more injury to your child self, even if you don't feel connected to that part of yourself. Really, many, many survivors can't remember childhood, and so they don't feel connection to their inner child. And there's a good reason for that, and I'll explain that in another video soon. But for right now, I'd like to encourage you to realize that self-criticism and anger toward yourself are really you taking the anger that you learned from an abusive parent and taking over the job of harming that child. Your abusive parent doesn't even need to do it anymore. I'm not saying this to make you feel bad about yourself. I'm simply trying to help you become more aware of what's really happening when you take your anger out on yourself. Now you can fix this. And the way you do it is to pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. Get really curious. Make a commitment to be kind. I can almost hear some of you saying that you don't deserve kindness, and I get that. I was there once too. Can you do this at least? Can you notice that this is also a habit of looking at yourself as non-deserving of love and kindness because of how you were treated? Sometimes harmful lies were repeated and reinforced for us so much that those lies began to feel like the truth. That you deserve love and kindness 
just for the very fact that you breathe, that's the truth. Anything else you've been telling yourself is a lie that feels true because it's been reinforced using fear and pain for most of your life. It doesn't have to stay like that. What I've noticed working with people for the last 24 years and specifically with members inside my community who are working through the Trauma Erase Method is that self-compassion is one of the hardest skills to learn. That's because every time we get hurt, the nonverbal message that we don't deserve compassion gets ingrained in our bodies. We undo these terrible messages a little at a time, one trigger at a time. As you learn to heal by understanding and using the system I'll teach you inside my community, you learn to become more compassionate toward yourself. Let me encourage you to join us by clicking the link in the description. I'm Tamara Ridge, the therapist that's been there. Let me encourage you to take the first step toward accepting yourself today. You can do this.